My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. One of the first memories I have as a child is nighttime prayers. So many of us were raised in the faith and were first taught the faith by our own parents, especially our mothers. And what memories I have of being tucked into bed at night, praying those first prayers that I learned, basically when I was first learning to talk. My mother would teach us the Our Father, the Hail Mary, the Glory Be, the Guardian Angel Prayer, especially the Guardian Angel Prayer. We would pray that before going to bed at night, placing ourselves under the protection of our angel. Maybe in every country this prayer is a little different, but as kids we learned the following. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful thing, that from the very beginning of our lives in the church, we're introduced into this great family that goes beyond ties of blood. My family has always included my angel, my guardian angel who is always by my side, who I can turn to for protection. We also, at a young age, were introduced to our mother, Mother Mary. The Hail Mary, which so many of us pray every night before going to bed, even now as full adults, we turn to Our Lady as our mother. St. Josemaria liked to say that, that Mary is the mother of Jesus and my mother. Today we celebrate the feast day of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And it's a wonderful chance for us to meditate on Our Lady once again and to realize what a wonderful mother she is. The Feast of Carmel reminds us of that wonderful devotion of the scapular, the scapular of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And that devotion, which is so old and venerated in the church, is a basic expression of our filial trust in Mary. We are children of God, and we are children of Our Lady. Because when Jesus was dying on the cross, when you, Lord, were hanging from the cross, you turned to your apostle John and told him, Behold your mother. And then you turned to your mother and you pointed to John and you said, Behold your son. And we know, Lord, that you were thinking of each one of us, your sons and daughters, and entrusting your very own mother to us. And we thank you for that. We thank you for the opportunity to have such a wonderful mother who has this maternal instinct to protect us. The scapular is all about protection. Right now, as I'm praying with you, Lord, I can feel that cloth scapular. I just touched my microphone. <laughs> that cloth scapular hanging around my neck, which I keep on all the time as an expression of my devotion to you and the conviction that you are protecting me at all times. Throughout history, Catholics have found many ways of rendering devoted homage to the Queen of Heaven. At times, it is Our Lady herself who has guided the filial piety of her children by signaling her appreciation for certain practices to which she has attached her motherly promises. Such is the case of devotion to the scapular of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. On July 16th, 1251, the Blessed Virgin appeared to St. Simon Stock, the general of the Carmelite order, promising a special blessing for all who wear her scapular. Since then, the church has solemnly approved this devotion that began in England and popes have granted numerous spiritual privileges to those who wear the scapular. 
And so this is a good opportunity for us to renew our devotion to Our Lady. If you don't wear a scapular, this is a good chance to think about whether that would be helpful. It's certainly a very common practice in the church. It's one that St. Josemaria uh, loved to encourage. In fact, he has a wonderful point in the way where he says, Wear on your breast the holy scapular of Carmel. There are many excellent Marian devotions, but few are as deep-rooted among the faithful and so richly blessed by the popes. It's a very motherly practice. The scapular protects us from danger, and it reminds us that whenever our Lord calls us, if we're wearing the scapular, it's, it's a, an expression of our devotion to Our Lady and the fact that we want Our Lady to speak well on our behalf in the moment of our judgment. The reading, the special reading for today's feast day, it points to this fact that we were reminded of as children when we kneeled bef- before our bed, before going to bed. We would kneel down and place our lives in Mary's protection. We would recognize her as our mother. The gospel, which is from the gospel of Matthew, says, Jesus was speaking to the crowds when his mother and his brothers appeared. They were standing outside and were anxious to have a word with him. But to the man who told him this, so this man told you, Lord, that your mother and your relatives were waiting for you outside, Jesus replied, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand towards his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers, anyone who does the will of my Father in heaven. He is my brother and sister and mother. Jesus, you pull us into your family. Through our baptism, we have been elevated to the life of grace, and our supernatural life is all about participating in your family. We who strive to do, to do your will, you don't hesitate to call us brother and sister and mother. You make your family our family. And this means that we have every right to call your mother, Mary, Mary of Nazareth, our mother. And just as you look to her as a child to protect you, to care for you, we too can do the same. It's very good that we entrust Our Lady with many things. You know, mothers, and I'm learning this more and more as I, as I grow older, they love to feel needed. They love to feel counted on. I know with my own mother, I make her very happy when I ask her for help, when I turn for, to her with my, my needs, both big and small. Mothers are, are there precisely because they, they have brought us into the world and they want to, to, to keep us safe. They want to keep us happy. And Our Lady has this maternal desire to help us. How happy it makes her when we turn to her in our needs. Every Hail Mary that we pray is a petition to Our Lady. We say, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for me now and at the hour of my death. Pray for us. How she loves to do this and how she looks longingly at each one of us, hoping to protect us even more as we struggle to become saints. Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Jesus, you look to each one of us and you ask us that question. Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Help us, Lord, to become more a part of your family by being more Marian. When we go to bed tonight, we can take a look at our scapular if we're wearing one. And if not, we can simply remind ourselves of Our Lady's protection. And just as, as we did when we were children, we, we can say those night prayers. Perhaps we need to brush them off a bit, those night prayers we learned as children, with that, with that simple spirit of a child looking to our mother who loves us so much and protects us every day. I thank you, my God, 
for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help in putting them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.